Dear students, today let us learn about subcellular fractionation. Let us start with the introduction. Cell fractionation is the process by which cells can be disassembled by chemical methods to isolate organelles and macromolecules. The process of cell fractionation involves destruction of cell boundaries by different mechanical or chemical procedures by homogenization followed by the subsequent fractionation or isolation of organelles or subcellular fractions according to mass, surface, and specific gravity. The process of cell fractionation enables the scientist to investigate the composition and functions of individual organelles which are often beyond the study provided by observations through a microscope. Let us see the steps of subcellular fractionation. Cell fractionation procedure generally involves different steps including extraction, homogenization, differential centrifugation, density gradient centrifugation for further separation and purification, collection of fractions and analysis of fractions. Let us see the first step that is extraction. It is the first step for isolating any subcellular structure in which the cells or tissues are kept suspended in a solution of appropriate pH and salt content, usually isotonic sucrose that is 0.25 mole per liter at 0 to 40 degrees Celsius to maintain the biological activity of organelles and biomolecules. The next step is homogenization. It is the first step where cells are broke open using different methods depending on the types of sample. Detergents like SDS or Triton X, sonication using ultrasound waves, agitation in the presence of metal or glass beads or blenders may be used to break open the cells. Homogenization commonly involves placing the cells in a closed glass vessel in which a tight-fitting plunger is inserted and rotated with a downward force to disrupt the cells. The third step is differential centrifugation. Centrifugation is a process which involves the application of the centrifugal force for the sedimentation of heterogeneous mixtures. During centrifugation, the contents get distributed as pellet and supernatant. The pellet constitutes the larger cell structures that settle at the bottom while the supernatant consists of smaller parts of the cells suspended in the liquid. Differential centrifugation is the type of centrifugation that involves repeated centrifugations and of increasing centrifugal force in the process to quicken the separation of the cellular components into pellet and supernatant. The values of differential centrifugation steps range from 1000 times gravity for 10 minutes in low speed. Commonly, pellets the nuclei in this step. The next range is 20,000 times gravity for 20 minutes in medium speed. Commonly in this range, the mitochondria are pelleted. The next is 80,000 times gravity for 1 hour in high speed. 
and it pellets the endoplasmic reticulum or ER, Golgi apparatus and other membrane fragments. And 150,000 times gravity for 3 hours in very high speed pellets ribosomes. Different subcellular organelles pellet at different speeds depending upon their sedimentation behavior. The next step is density gradient centrifugation. Density gradient or isopycnic centrifugation involves separation of organellar fractions on the basis of density and size commonly achieved by centrifugation in a gradient of specially prepared sucrose gradient solution. When sedimented through such sucrose gradients, different cell components separate into distinct bands and each component can be separated from the bands. Measurements of sedimentation coefficients are used to determine the size and subunit composition of organelles and macromolecules found in cells. The next step is the collection of fractions. Collecting fractions after centrifugation is the next common step which helps in keeping the fractionated samples pure and intact. It can be done in three ways. The first method is the collection of fractions by hand. It is accomplished by puncturing the side walls of the centrifuge tube with needle and withdrawing the fractions using a syringe. The second method is collection of fractions by using machine. In this method, a gradient uploader is used to introduce very dense non-mischable medium into the bottom of the tube which pushes up the fractions to the top from where they can be collected. Finally, if no pellet is produced, then the fractions are commonly collected through a hole in the bottom of the centrifuge tube. The next step is the analysis of fractions. This step is needed to identify and quantify the purified fractions for successful downstream applications. The fractions can be analyzed by using the following methods. First by light or electron microscopy. Secondly by biochemical methods used to determine the presence of macroenzymes. Thirdly, by assay for a protein marker with an antibody by Western blotting. And fourthly, by determination of protein concentration by using a spectrophotometer. The next is by determination of specific activity or the ratio of activity of the enzyme of interest to the protein concentration. Let us now see the applications of cell fractionation. Cell fractionation is used in cell biology to study the structure and functions of individual organelles in detail. Studies of organelles and other large subcellular components isolated by cellular fractionation have contributed enormously to our understanding of the functions of different cellular components. For example, a specific cell fraction having enzymes that function in cellular respiration obtained by centrifugation was found to be rich in mitochondria and it helped in determining mitochondria to be the site of cellular respiration. Similarly, the role of chloroplasts in converting energy and the function of rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum have been studied from fractions containing the fragments. Cell fractionation also allows studying of many other biological processes in purified cell-free systems 
free from all of the complex side reactions occurring in a living cell. For example, the mechanisms of protein synthesis were deciphered from such experiments where fractionation of cell homogenate that could translate RNA molecules produce ribosomes, transfer RNAs, and enzymes that constitute the protein synthetic machinery. In such systems, once individual pure components were available, the exact role of each component can be studied by adding or withholding of the components separately to define the role of the components in the overall process. Many of the molecular biology processes of the cell, including DNA replication and DNA transcription, RNA splicing, protein translation, muscle contraction, and particle transport along microtubules has been discovered by studying cell-free systems. Cell-free systems have also been used to study complex and organized processes like cell division cycle, the separation of chromosomes on the mitotic spindle, and the vesicular transport of proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum through the Golgi apparatus to the plasma membrane. Cell fractionation also helps in separation of subcellular organelles, enzymes, hormones, RNA-DNA hybrids, ribosomal subunits, and for the analysis of size, distribution of polysomes and lipoprotein fractions. Let us now see the conclusion. The process of cell fractionation involves destruction of cell boundaries by different mechanical or chemical procedures to isolate organelles and macromolecules. It requires homogenization followed by the subsequent fractionation or isolation of organelles or subcellular fractions according to mass, surface, and specific gravity. Cell fractionation enables the scientists to investigate the composition and function of individual organelles, which are often beyond the study provided by observations through a microscope. Cell fractionation also allows studying of many other biological processes like cell division cycle, the separation of chromosomes on the mitotic spindle, and the vesicular transport of proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum through the Golgi apparatus to the plasma membrane. Cell fractionation also helps in separation of subcellular organelles, enzymes, hormones, RNA-DNA hybrids, ribosomal subunits, and for the analysis of size distribution of polysomes and lipoprotein fractions. Thank you.